Okay, we got rolling and action. Well, Chico, hello. I'm going to start. You have a lot of fans right here in Asbury Park. Tell me about your goals in Asbury Park. Well, when I started in Asbury Park, I was uh, the executive director for the Paramount Theater and Convention Hall and uh, director of special events to revive a lot of jazz, a lot of blues, and resurrect the uh, convention center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came over from the Count Basie Theater because I grew up in Asbury. I came to Asbury in 68, 1968 and uh, from Washington, D.C. And uh, I liked uh, Asbury, I liked the beach. You know, I enjoyed myself when I was young and um, I just wanted to really, you know, make a contribution to the town from, um, from what I was taught, what I was raised on, which was music and entertainment. And uh, I pursued it and um, I have a lot of good friends there. You know, and uh, we had a lot of good festivals and good concerts. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope it really continues. Now, you get your <clears throat> legacy from where? Well, actually, the Rouse legacy started from my mother and my father. Uh, my mother was a, a dancer in the Cotton Club and in the Savoy alongside Lena Horne and a lot of other famous dancers. Uh, my father's Charlie Rouse, who is a jazz saxophonist, who worked along with many of the greats, Clifford Brown, Donald Byrd, Dizzy Gillespie, Count Basie, uh, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, uh, and the names goes on. Uh, but um, So they started the legacy, actually. Um, I'm just continuing it, um, basically. Um, I don't want to say that I really had an, uh, an ultimatum, but I was asked if I continued in the music business, the most important thing to them was to pass it on. So I think continuing the Rouse legacy is, uh, is one of the most important things to me. Uh, the Rouse legacy actually has several different components in it, uh, education, performance, and entertainment. Uh, so. It's a, it's a pretty good job and a pretty good handful of trying to get all this stuff done. Nice. Now, you go back and you say that you learned your experience from your father, your mother, you know, what they went through. And they went through hard times. Yeah. Did you find it easier for you Well, no. nowadays? Well, nowadays, well, you know, when I grew up, and uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up at the time where, like, uh, all of these greats were, like, really starting to excel and artistically. Uh, the business end of the entertainment business was much, much different than it is now. Um, but when I was growing up and I started to get serious and my parents accepted me being in the business, um, my father told me at that time, which was early 70s maybe, he says, you know, if you can't do it now, you'll never be able to do it. So. I think it's a lot easier now. I think it's a lot more diverse because of the, the time and space and the age of technology. Uh, but artistically, I think it never really changes because it's all about the human creation of what you deliver and what you express. Um, so I don't really think it's difficult artistically in the artistic sense. Um, but businessly, it is, it, it's, it, you have your hands full. An artist that's going to be a businessman and an artist is a big task, yeah. Now, my next question to you would be that you want to portray the Rouse legacy in, right. of course, your father's name and right. your name. Right. How would you compare yourself in that era there to this era that you're in now? Well, I always have to keep in mind that I'm a junior. I'm not a senior. So, therefore, uh, I always have to revert back to the beginning because that's the most important thing in life is the beginning when you're brought here. So, uh, I revert back and I try to um, really reflect on how their approach was to, to the music, how, how their approach was to, to that art, you know, what their, you know, little idiosyncrasies was, what, you know, what their attitudes was, you know, what their 
you know, the vision, how they expressed it, you know, where they were getting it from. Um, so, you know, if I don't reflect back on that, I don't think I'm going to get any further, you know, because I was always taught if you, if you really don't apply a little bit of pressure on your neck, then you get complacent and you won't grow. You won't, you won't succeed in it. You won't be able to push yourself. So in that sense, that's pretty much why I, uh, I think now that it's, uh, it's not easy for me, but uh, it's actually a little bit more difficult for the simple fact that not really me, but other people, their expectation of me. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not my father. You know, I'm me. Um, I happen to be raised around some of the greats, many of the greats, and uh, had that exposure you know, had those influences, um, had those personal relationships with them, social, uh, when they were in their business settings, you know, when they were taking care of business or when they were acting s socially with people. I, I just happened to be in that setting. Um, again, you know, I was, I was the only child, so I had to be there. I was either being babysitted by some of my mother's friends when she was on stage or I was being babysitted by some of my father's friends when he was on stage, like the Baroness, Milk Jackson's wife. Uh, so I was getting it from all ends, you know, which I think really helps me right now to be able to uh, reflect and to give and to pass it on pretty broad and pretty, you know, with a lot of experience in a certain extent. I mean, I'm, I'm 63 now, you know. Time moves. Good, and, good. Uh, you know, I don't think I have too much gray, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, 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 <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know I mean? Now, if I asked you, in comparison to when you started, to mm -hmm. comparison to where you are now, mm -hmm. how do you feel you accomplished things? Well, you know, um, musically, um, I started when I was six years old, um, and, uh, I got instruct. I had instructions by some of the greats like Elvin Jones, Charlie Persip, Freddie Waits, Ben Riley, Max Roach. I mean, some of the greatest drummers in the world. Norman Grossman. Um, so, uh, far as my family giving me the tools that I needed to be able to succeed, um, they did what they had to do. You know, it was up to me at that point to to do what I needed to do and to uh, embrace all of it. At a younger age, you know how it is. You're, you're doing a lot of different things. You're really distracted and stuff. But as I continued in the music, um, it got seriouser. You know, more things that they were saying to me came to light um, in different experiences musically. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to play with some of the greats, not only study with some of them, but play with some of them. Grover Washington, George Benson, Charles Earl, and Eric Gale, you know, and so on. And uh, they applied pressure to me, you know, not because of who I was, but just because of the, the love that they had for the music and what they demanded for their music. So, you know, right now I think that, uh, that I'm in a, good place to be able to really, you know, share the experience with the youth that's really interested and really uh, desiring to make music their profession or if they just want to have a love for it socially. So that's really where, where I am right now. Now with that same concept, mm -hmm. how would you inspire the youth of today? Well, the Rouse Legacy has an educational component in it. And the educational component is based on really, um, you know, all of the kids that really go to school and, uh, and um, study, you know, whatever specific instrument that they like to ha uh, play. Um, but there's a little bit more than just going to school and uh, sitting down and learning how to read music, um, going out and playing what you just learned how to read. Um, there's, a, there's a science to it, you know, the, like anything in life. There's, there's, a, there's a concept, there's a science to it. And 
the more that you really learn the science in full, the more you really, really can express yourself fully in that specific situation. And this situation is music. So I feel that with the Rouse legacy, the e educational part of it is, is that by growing up in the business uh, and being born in the business, uh, it was always around me, whether I wanted it or not. It was just always there. Subconsciously, I was absorbing stuff that I didn't really realize at that moment. Uh, but as I grew up and I continued in the music business, a lot of things would come to the forefront that I would be sitting around Thelonious Monk, you know, for a decade watching uh, one of the greatest piano players of all time express himself how he expressed himself to other musicians, how he treated other musicians, how he pulled things out of other musicians, how he molded other musicians. You know, so there's, it's just more than just going to school and learning how to read the music and then going out and playing the gig. My next question to you would be that you have a true, true heart passion for the music. Right. How are you going to express that out to the public? to your youth, the Rouse legacy? Well, you know, I think the legacy, with the three components or the various components in the legacy, I think it covers a broad base. You know, it covers the an educational point of it. It covers whether they want to perform. Uh, and uh, it covers the entertainment part because I was fortunate enough at a certain point in my life when I came off the road after 20 years, I really came off the road and I got into the business sense of the music. You know, not only just the performing end, because at this day and age, the business part, if you're making it your business or your livelihood, you need to know that. Um, so, I mean, teaching them those different components of business, uh, the component of entertaining, and educating them, I think the legacy uh, will contribute a large, um, I could just say, uh, contribution to the youth that's coming up. If they want to listen and if they want to learn, um, we're here to give it to them. You know, we'll hold nothing back um, because I was so-called not instructed, but I was asked to pass it on, and that's my goal. How do you think you're doing today? Uh, a little tired. <laughs> a little tired because, you know, we've been working very, very hard. The company that I'm affiliated with is Fat Tracks, and the owner is Todd Wilson, and we've been doing a lot of music producing. Uh, we've been doing a lot of projects in, in reference to the legacy uh, from top to bottom, and uh, it's, a, it's a big task when you when you you know, when you love it, because you automatically put in 150%. You don't realize it, but you, you just do it because of the love for it, the passion of it. So, uh, but, I, but I'm not complaining. I love every minute of it, you know. Understood. So when does the public expect some of that passion that you just put out? Wow, well, well, we're dropping five albums this year. This is 2018. Um, we have one album dropping beginning of uh, March, another al album dropping beginning of April, and then we have three albums dropping simultaneously after that by the end of the year. We have a, a biography that's coming out. I have a biography that's coming out called, called Growing Up in the Business, um, and I'm doing some consulting on a new movie that's coming out. Uh, in reference to Thelonious Monk and my father working with Thelonious Monk for that decade. And um, so there's a lot of things. And then the education component is touring the country and uh, looking to educate the kids in all of the uh, institutes that offer them music. Absolutely. Thank you for the interview. Darius, man. You Thank you so well. much. Uh, All right. You're my man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hit some of that. Show me what we're going to get.
Give me an example. <laughs> Can I get a sample? <laughs>